DC, you and me, we're gonna have some words. We're gonna talk about your uh, changes to the Batman Hush movie because they're rather significant changes, but I was told I can't use my original intro for this because it's nothing but spoiler yelling. So I was informed that I need to give you guys a spoiler warning by our producer, Dan. He said, Benny, do an intro, introducing your intro. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm telling you right now that we are about to cut away to my original intro and we are going to have some words and you're going to see my intro and then we're going to talk about Batman Hush, the movie. All right? Other intro. Riddler! R why? Riddler. R really? Riddler? We're going to do Riddler. R I'm going to, I'm going to table flip a chair behind me because you picked Riddler. Of all the villains that you could have replaced Thomas Elliot with, you went with Riddler. Why? Who? I, I can't even, I can't even, I can't do this. That's weird, isn't it? Like, rewinding it? It's like how I open portals and close them. Anyway, let's talk about Batman Hush, okay? So, Batman Hush, I'm gonna give you my opinions on the changes to the movie. But I don't think that this is going to take up a lot of space. So what I wanted to do was basically get my hands on a bunch of comments from you guys so that we can see if you agree with my opinions on Batman Hush. If you look at YouTube, there's a community tab. I went to the community tab and I made my question what did you guys think about the changes to Batman Hush? And I'm going to take those comments. Now, since I won't be properly needing our whiteboard, what I asked our whiteboard to do today was put down every single comment so that I can read it off of the whiteboard and then make X and stuff like through that. So, whiteboard or, or laptop. Yeah, this, this is probably a lot easier, a lot, lot simpler this way. Yeah, this makes one, a lot more sense. I know I hired an intelligent whiteboard who's also my producer named Dan. Anyway, starting off at the beginning of this, let's go ahead and talk about my opinions on Hush. Now, Hush, for the most part, sticks to the main core plots of the actual comic book. That's okay. We have a villain who is currently acting behind the scenes, manipulating all of the rogues within Batman's gallery while he is trying to, uh, I guess, facilitate a relationship with Catwoman. He's not really truly dating her, but he's trying to lean in that direction. Um, and Hush is doing all these things behind the scenes. Now, in the comic series, this is a, a series that spanned over the course of a year which allowed you to really get attached to all of the elements that were going on in this. There's also a lot more of the rogue gallery being involved in it. And we also had some rather large reveals in there, such as Jason Todd being a part of the whole event. Yes, I know for all of you hardcore comic fans, at the time of Hush coming out, it wasn't Jason Todd, it was actually Clayface, but as it was retconned later, it was actually Jason Todd. Doesn't really matter at this point because he's not in the movie. Also, the conclusion to the comic book basically states that Riddler, you, who you thought was actually a part of the whole plot, was actually being manipulated by Thomas Elliot, and the two of them were working together to an extent, and it was all Thomas Elliot. Thomas Elliot was Hush. So we were introduced to the character of Thomas Elliot, one of Batman's friends, and at the end of a year-long span of time, we discovered that Thomas Elliot was actually the villain. It's very reminiscent of the original Teen Titans line when we were introduced to Terra, and about a year or two later, we discovered that Terra was actually a villain. It was a really, really substantial change to the Batman mythos because we were introduced to a character that seemingly was a good friend of Batman's only to find out that he was actually Hush. And yes, you could have seen it coming, but since it took over a year, you kind of got attached to the characters and what was going on. It was a very good storyline. Now, let's look at the movie version. The movie version made a few minor changes at the beginning. First off, no mention of Jason Todd or Tim Drake. I'm okay with that. Uh, I know a lot of people are gonna ask me, I mean, I've literally got the Red Hood tattoo right here. Um, a lot of people are gonna ask, what did you think about Red Hood being gone? That's fine. I get what they're doing in the DC Animated Universe. They wanted to wrap it into their current continuity. And in the current continuity, we have Nightwing and then a Robin. So we have Nightwing and Damien, and there's nobody in between. So you can't bring in Jason Todd and make no sense. I would have preferred Jason Todd to be involved, but I get why he's not there. Fine, whatever. We had the, oh, another big change was Bane and Killer Croc swapping roles. Okay, fine, Bane's fine. I would have preferred Killer Croc. It would have been more true to the original story but Bane's more of a recognizable villain for Batman. Let's go ahead and throw him out there. But the big change, the big change, DC, <laughs> is the Riddler is the true villain. There is no Thomas Elliot Hush. We discovered that the Riddler got brain surgery from Thomas Elliot, and apparently at some point he requested that Thomas Elliot put a scar of a question mark on his head, because that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Tell you what, if I ever have to get brain surgery, somebody put the scar of my logo on my head, and since it's my face, it's gonna look very just messy and weird, 
But yeah, do that. That's what I love. Or Bullseye. Bullseye did that too. Why? Why? Why would Bullseye put a bullseye on his forehead? It made no sense. It's literally shoot me in the head. I mean, come on. Anyway, anyway. Back, I, I, I digress. I digress. I'm learning. I got a word of the day calendar. It's teaching me things. Anyway. The villain turns out to be the Riddler, who apparently went through the Lazarus Pit, who then became like super strong and super intelligent, and he manipulated everyone, and it was cool, and, and then he died. And then we have the next big change, in which, the, so in the comic book, Batman and Catwoman were kind of together, and at the end of the entire adventure, Catwoman and him were like, hey, we did it, we succeeded, it's all over, and, he, and she goes, hush. Now all the villains are stating hush in the comic book, so when she says hush, she's telling him to be quiet, he says he can't trust her. So the reason why they don't end up together is because she can't, he can't trust her anymore, and since he can't trust her and he can't trust anyone, they can never have a lasting relationship. That was the answer in the comic, it makes more sense to me. Okay, so, problems with this. First off, Riddler, why? It doesn't make any sense. I, I get for the sake of the continuity that they wanted to do there, they wanted you to think, oh, we're introducing Thomas Elliot. He must be Hush. They wanted to surprise you. Problem I have with that, the Riddler reveal wasn't worthwhile. If you had made it someone else more intelligent, more crazy, maybe we had gotten Ra's al Ghul involved, or maybe it's like a Vandal Savage thing, something uh, like a villain that wouldn't make sense. But Riddler? Riddler manipulated by the Lazarus Pit. That was our big baddie. It doesn't. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. Now, the the whole situation in which Catwoman. So basically, in the movie, Catwoman ends. Up, Catwoman and Batman end up letting Riddler die. Batman was trying to save him. Catwoman forced him to to fall into whatever he fell into, and they blew up. Two of them get away. And Catwoman basically pulls the Jason Todd line, where she's like, Riddler tried to kill me. He killed Thomas Elliot. If you are upset that uh, he died, why are you upset? Uh, and basically Batman's like, cause I gotta save everyone, I, that's what I do. And she's like, well, that is the problem. If you're gonna try to save everyone, I can't be with you. And that was why they ended it in the, in the movie. That doesn't have as much weight as Batman's inability to trust anyone being the reason why they can't be together. Him not trusting anyone is much better of a reason why he can't be with Catwoman than Catwoman basically going, oh man, that thing I thought about you where you can't let anyone die and you're a good guy, yeah. I guess, I guess you meant it. So I, I, I wow, I, I don't know why I didn't see the signs on this. You know, you wouldn't even kill a spider out your front door when you were walking out. You were like, maybe it's a good guy. I'll put him in Arkham Spider Asylum. I, I don't know why I went on that tangent. That's, that's, that's could someone give me a, like a, an image of like Arkham Spider Asylum and tweet me that? would be really interesting and kind of cool. Anyway, it doesn't work for me because Catwoman, like it doesn't, she knows Batman. She knows he's not gonna let anyone die. Why is she now surprised that he's not gonna let anyone die? They established in the, con like they didn't meet in the movie. They've known each other. So whatever. The, the, I get, I understand that they wanted to do a movie that the old comic book viewer would not be expecting. And I understand that if you don't know the original Hush storyline, most of these plot points are going to play out and you're gonna be like, okay, Riddler, that was kind of lame, but it was, it, I get it, cool. But the Catwoman thing at the end is the crux for me because that doesn't make sense. She can't suddenly go, oh, you're Batman, right, you don't let people die. Guess I can't be with you. You know, like it doesn't, like it made more sense when he thought he couldn't trust her, okay? But that's my opinions on this. It's an okay movie for someone who's not really into comic books that much. You're gonna watch it, find it okay. The reveal at the ending overall, I guess it works, but for me, I would have preferred Hush or at least another villain that was more substantial than Riddler. Heck, if you wanted to flip things on his head, what if it was the Joker? Like, is, is it because you just don't want us to see it coming? I, Joker, Vandal Savage, Ra's al Ghul, I guess pulling the C-lister out really threw everyone for a loop, but it just didn't work. It didn't work for me. I, and, and maybe that's because I read way too many comics, but Knowing that this was going to be a very quick rant where my thoughts were rambling all over the place, I said, like at the beginning of the video, I asked you guys your opinions on it. So, we are going to look at what the top comments are for my question, for you. So the top comments, the, uh, with 250 upvotes, I thought it was great until they made the Hush the Riddler. Thank you, Mr. Some Red Mage Gamer. Some RDM Gamer. Red Mage is what we call it in Final Fantasy XIV, but uh, whatever, you probably aren't a Red Mage. 
Uh, Mr. Nut with a hundred of votes. Love your name, by the way. <laughs> Personally, I think that all of the newer animated DC content has been really downgraded from what we got in movies like Under the Red Hood. Uh, I agree with you, but I think that's a different reasoning than what you probably think. In my opinion, their budget has gone way down and they are not properly promoting these, so they're not getting as many sales as they think they should be getting, and therefore the budget keeps going down. Uh, DC really needs to work on its marketing because, let me ask you this, I didn't know Hush came out, did you? It's on the back panel, back page of some comic books, but it came out digitally first, but it wasn't on DC Universe, and then it went to the physical stores, and that's when it hit DC Universe. And did you know Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out? But apparently it's only on Amazon Prime, from what I'm being told. I can't even find it right now unless I go buy it physical. Uh, I think there's a big marketing issue, and I think that's why the video, the movies have been downgraded, because they're not promoting them, therefore people aren't watching them, therefore the budget is going down. But I think it's another rant for another day. What happened? to the classic, amazing DC animated universe. But anyway, let's, let's move down. At uh, 74 upvotes, you wrote a novel, Chide007, but at expanse of entertaining new or non-comic book DC animated movie watchers, they ruined an amazing graphic novel to make the movie seem original. The twist in the movie didn't have the same emotional impact and consequence that it did have in the comic book. Having the Riddler be Hush lost the emotional and devastating betrayal that Batman and Bruce felt when it was revealed to be Thomas Elliot, a character who was meant to be an ally, a friend, and someone that he trusted. Due to having Hush be the Riddler, all that emotional connection that should have been between Hush and Batman has lost. That's exactly what I was saying, and actually that brings me to a point that I don't think I brought up in my rant. I feel like this was way too condensed. Being spread over a year to where we get to know Thomas Elliot, we get to know what the, who he is, why he's important, and stuff like that, is a lot harder to do in an hour and a half movie, but I think changing to the Riddler is not the answer. It should have just still been probably Thomas Elliot or someone else. I, just the, the movie condensed way too much down to make it work for a 90 minute movie. This is not something that should have been condensed because what makes this story good is the connections that Batman makes during the series. The connection to Catwoman, the connection to Thomas Elliot. That's what makes Hush a good story. It's not that Batman beats Hush. It's that Batman is betrayed by Hush, his dear friend, and then cannot trust the woman that he supposedly loves. That's the story of Hush and why it is good. But moving down the line here, we got uh, Alesso Alessi. So the twist was fine to me, but honestly, they shouldn't have called this movie Batman Hush or make Hush the supposed main villain. They could have made an original story and used some of the elements of the original Hush graphic novel as they did with Batman Bad Blood. That was partially based on Batman Rip and Batman Battle for the Cow, but was an original story. And I agree with you on that. I'm really getting tired with these comic book based movies and animated movies taking the names of classic storylines and then not really doing the classic storyline. One that I even notoriously ranted about was Marvel's Civil War. As much as I did enjoy Civil War, it was not Civil War. Civil War was a big all out battle between tons and tons of superheroes. It should have been called, uh, you know, uh, Captain, uh, was it was Captain America Civil War? Yeah, no. Captain America Civil War. It should have been called Captain America, uh, a few of us have a scuffle at an airport. But anyway, moving down the line here, we've got G3 says, no Jason Todd, Clayface, Thomas as Hush, but my favorite part that they left out was Batman tells the Riddler that if he ever wants to expose his identity, Raza al Ghul is still looking for who, for who used the pit. Boom. So I'm assuming G3 did enjoy it. That was his opinions. Upvote over 39. And upvoted for 30, we have David David Sequoia, or I can't pronounce your last name and I apologize. I don't like Bane. They made him kinda seem stupid. And I didn't like that the Riddler was the final villain. Thomas is the villain would have been more impactful. And as the development of the character seemed kinda rushed at times, they probably would do better if they had 30 or more minutes to slow it down. My point exactly. The movie should have been stretched out, thrown in some more stuff, more character development, more time with Catwoman, more time with Thomas Elliot, and then the reveal of Thomas Elliot would have made sense and it would have worked for the story of Batman Hush. All right, we're gonna go to this last one here from Luke Davis with 17 upvotes. It was a good movie for a casual fan who hasn't read Hush or just a fan of the animated movies. DC's animated movies pretty much has some faults and are simplified in order to fit the 90 minute or so movie format. It's a good attempt to have a twist for those who have read Hush, but a disappointing one. The identity of Hush in the comics is not simply for a twist, since it's quite obvious who he is, quite similar to the Phantasm in Arkham's Arkham Knight. There's another layer for Bruce to be portrayed by his childhood friend and not just some villain that he's already met. The storyline is pretty much the same without that much impact in future movies, except for the Bat-Cat relationship. 
Another one criticism is the lack of Clayface as Jason Todd, but I think they're limiting the Bat family, but getting the less popular ones, Batwing and Batwoman. I disagree with that, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Tim Drake is supposed to be the Robin here, but that's too many Robins for the DC animated movie universe, I guess. So probably we're going to get Huntress next, and then Bluebird, and then Signal. Lastly, it's the animation. The animation is good, but seeing the same animation throughout the, sa throughout the DC animated movie universe, it started to look bland, especially since the comic is illustrated by Jim Lee and is pretty much standard looking. I know they release at least two movies per year, but I hope they change the style or a Justice League main event is at least half as gorgeous as Spider-Verse, or hoping for a less bat movie in the DC Animated Universe. Green Lantern needs some look too. Uh, I 100% agree with you on the Green Lantern. I don't know what they're doing at that. I made a rant about that, how the Green Lantern is being shuffed away. Uh, I will say they are limiting the Bat family, but I, I do agree why they're doing it. People know Jason Todd. People know Tim Drake. The comic book fans do. They have had their time to try and become bigger in the DC world, uh, and they haven't. Red Hood did. Red Hood's a thing. But Tim, he never really caught on outside of your, con your hardcore comic book fans. Nightwing is somebody that they've been pushing real hard recently. I'm actually not sure. I always assumed Nightwing was popular, but I guess he's sticking around. And they're really pushing the Damien true son of Batman thing. So they're just trying to limit down to what they're trying to promote and who they're trying to promote because overall they want you to recognize these characters. Um, overall, the everyone here, I do know that there are some people that enjoyed this. I don't, they're not the most upvoted ones. And if you are wondering where I'm reading this, if you go to YouTube, there is actually a community tab where I try to keep you guys up to date on what's going on with any schedule problems or ask you questions like this. But overall, you guys kind of agreed with what I was talking about. I know that this is kind of an echo chamber because you guys mostly agreed with what I was saying, but there are people who have been enjoying this and I want to know your opinions as well. So let me know in the comments down below here, the people that enjoyed it, what you enjoyed about this movie. Did you mind the changes? Did you have issues? Because I had issues. I've made that very clear. Also, do you like this style of us doing a video where I talk about a topic, but I also get your opinions on it? Um, maybe the whiteboard can get a little bit of a break and we kind of have a uh, comment review show along with a whiteboard show. Either way, thank you guys for watching today. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget, you can find all of our stuff over at Patreon or the Comic Story and Premium Membership where you can get early access to many, many of our videos and basically have more discussions with us in general over there. We're building a really strong community between Patreon, Discord, and now I'm trying to make this community tab work as well for you YouTube-only individuals, um, and hopefully it'll all work out. But that, that's my verdict. People have been asking me what I thought about Batman Hush. It's okay. I, at the end, I'd give it a six out of 10 if you don't know the comic book. That's my opinion on the Hush book.